Hollywood is the land of the immortal. But while many of our favorite actors seem to have cut a deal with Father Time, none of them have yet found a way to wind the clock backwards. And that's where movie magic comes in, because while actors may not be able to do it themselves, VFX wizards certainly can. I'm Ewan, you're watching Wild Culture, and here are 10 actors who were de-aged for movie roles. Number 10. Paul Rubens, Pee-wee's Big Holiday Pee-wee's Big Holiday proves that has-been comedy characters can make a bold, road-trip-shaped return to the big screen and still come up trumps, despite what Mr. Bean's Holiday has to say about it. But it couldn't have been done without Pee-wee actor himself, Paul Rubens, committing to the bit. Reprising his role as quirky oddball Pee-wee Herman nearly three decades on from the last cinematic appearance of his character in Big Top Pee-wee from 1988, the sadly now-departed Rubens had to look the part. Rather than take the sad and broken old man Indiana Jones and Obi-Wan approach, director John Lee would settle for nothing less than the original Pee-wee on full, youthful, flexible form. Rubens certainly still had that slapstick sensibility and the physicality to match, but his face told a different story. Even on someone as preternaturally youthful as he, with 30 years between outings, there were always going to be noticeable differences in appearance. To combat some of the lines, wrinkles, and general life wear, the actor was de-aged and de-wrinkled digitally in post-production, with it taking the effects team around five months to edit the then 63-year-old's appearance in every single frame of footage. But it's hard to argue with the subtle and pretty much seamless results. Number 9. Will Smith – Gemini Man Gemini Man achieved a cinematic first by pitting Will Smith against Will Smith in what winds up as a battle royale rather than a battle of ego. Former Marine Scout Sniper turned assassin Henry, played by Smith, is hunted on the eve of his retirement by a boyish clone of himself known as Junior, also portrayed by Smith, sent by the organization he was seeking to leave. Rather than using the tied and tested tricks of the trade to shoot Smith in both roles, such as doubles, camera tricks, and mashing up shots with split screens, like JCVD did on more than one occasion, director Ang Lee took a more novel approach. Lee and his VFX team used Avatar-style performance capture from Smith in order to create a digitally rendered younger clone of his character, rather than working on top of his existing performance. This freed up the production from all the trappings of an actor playing two characters and allowed a greater scope for what Lee could do with his blocking, staging, and camera work. Number 8. Jeff Bridges – Tron Legacy As well as being the first feature film to put an entirely CGI-rendered scene on our screens, the original Tron introduced audiences to the possibilities of virtual reality and gave the ever-charismatic Jeff Bridges who stars as Kevin Flynn, a computer programmer and game developer who finds himself transported into the digital landscape of his computer, a much-needed boost in Hollywood. But the big man wasn't done yet. Returning in Tron Legacy as both Kevin and his younger, evil digital self Clue from the first movie, Bridges was able to step back into both pairs of boots thanks to some savvy VFX work. One of the first big Hollywood movies to use this kind of de-aging tech in a major role, as well as the first to have an actor play opposite the younger version of himself, Tron Legacy brought two full-fleshed characters to the screen via a full-service digital workover. The VFX team made Bridges look 35 again by recording the star's facial movements and superimposing them onto a digital model of his younger self. While the end product looks pretty good for 2010 and helped move the technology along that bit further, Further, it is nonetheless unfortunate that similarly painstaking work was not done on Bridges' voiceover. After all, it's hard to suspend disbelief when there's a 61-year-old voice cutting out of a 35-year-old face. The same reason that the opening of Indiana Jones The Dial Destiny also felt very weird. Number 7. Jennifer Connelly, American Pastoral Adapting the novels of the late, great Philip Roth has never been easy. Many have tried, many have failed, and director and star Ewan McGregor's American Pastoral 
is closer to the latter. Starring as a family torn apart by one major life-changing community-shattering event, McGregor and Jennifer Connelly star as all-American couple Seymour and Dawn Levov. And it was no small task for either actor taking on roles that span from the pair's young courting days all the way up to the miserable in-film present of 1996, inhabiting these characters through every stage of their lives. For Connolly's role as Dawn, who is a young beauty pageant contestant when the couple first meet, the VFX team aimed to de-age her by 25 years, so that she would appear similar to how she did in 1991's The Rocketeer, filmed when the actress was just 19. To achieve this, they digitally enhanced her face to make it look more full, rounding her cheeks and jaw, and smoothing out some of her skin. Paired with the 1950s setting, styling, and soft tones, the effect managed to look pretty natural and was a rare win in a film that was otherwise dead on arrival. Number 6. Bruce Willis – Surrogates Set in the near future, Surrogates builds a world in which people are freed from pain and danger by living through robotic avatars of themselves called, you guessed it, Surrogates. FBI Agent Greer, played by Bruce Willis, is one such vicarious operator. But when a murder shakes the supposedly perfect society to its core, uncovering a sinister conspiracy, he has to ditch his surrogate and raw dog reality in order to get to the bottom of it. With such a killer concept, not just any old effects would do, and industrial light and magic were brought on board with a smattering of other digital effects outfits, creating amongst themselves a second, younger version of the actor that audiences could really get behind. To make the then 50-year-old Bruce Willis into a young, fresh-faced surrogate robot, the hair and makeup team went ham on the practical effects, before the digital team took over in post and gave what VFX supervisor Mark Stetson described as a digital facelift. Unfortunately, too much of the attention went to the film's visual style and not enough to the script, which winds up being predictable, forgettable, and not nearly worthy of the work and talents that went in elsewhere. Number 5. Shah Rukh Khan – Fan Hindi-language action thriller fan stars Shah Rukh Khan in a dual role as Bollywood actor Aryan Khanna as well as his obsessed fan conventional stalker Gaurav Chandana, who looks like a younger version of him and uses his likeness to his advantage. Appropriately enough, the film operates as a kind of poisoned letter to Bollywood that places Khan on a pedestal and then uses his opposite to criticize the culture, the status, and the sensationalism that is such a big part of the scene. Rather than drafting a relative or another actor who looks enough like Khan to sell the Guar of part, the actor was signed on with the intention of playing both roles himself. Director Manish Sharma and his team used prosthetics in scene, filming the required shots with two performances from Khan before taking the footage to the effects lab for further post-production work. To achieve a convincing effect, they used the process of 3D scanning on the actor and then layered VFX to iron out the actor's lines and wrinkles, add some baby fat to his face, and slim his frame down, taking away muscle mass from the arms, waist, and shoulders. The effects are impressive and serve the film precisely as they are meant to, often prompting us to forget we're not watching two different people. Number 4. Isabel Furman – Orphan – First Kill Preceding the events of the first orphan film, First Kill has the pint-sized Esther, played by Isabel Furman, escape from a psychiatric ward in Estonia, hoping to carve out a new life for herself. Having killed guards and therapists and whoever else she can lay her tiny hands on, Esther makes her way to the US in pursuit of the American dream, to impersonate the missing presumed dead daughter of a wealthy family until such a time comes as she can dispose of them and inherit their stash. It's just what we, we all aspire to do. Having played an adult pretending to be a child whilst a child in the first film, Furman returned for the orphan prequel as an adult to play an even younger adult pretending to be a child. Ugh. Rather than use expensive digital de-aging technology for this outing, which financiers were unlikely to approve for a non-blockbuster horror, director William Brent Bell went back to basics. He used all the tricks in the book, relying on tactful makeup and clothing choices on the then 25-year-old Furman, platform shoes for the supporting cast, false perspective, and other old-fashioned movie magic techniques to make the lead appear significantly smaller and younger in every scene. Once you know how it's done, though, it's hard to look at some of the movie scenes the same way ever again. Number 3. 
Brad Pitt, The Curious Case of Benjamin Button The Curious Case of Benjamin Button, David Fincher's most mawkish film to date, put Brad Pitt in the ultimate anti-Tyler Durden role as an old, frail, and kindly New Orleans gent who ages in reverse. As the story progresses, Benjamin's life weaves in and out of sync with that of Daisy's, played by Kate Blanchett, a dancer whom he can never quite meet at the right moment for that romance to find its focal point. Despite aging backwards through every rugged stage of Pitt, we've ever seen on screen. Finch's digital, practical hair and makeup teams worked in unison to de-age Pitt throughout the film, utilizing their different skills depending on what stage the character was at. This meant wigs, prosthetics, and age-appropriate clothing, but also a whole lot of VFX on top of his performance, using layers developed on live cast of the actor's face that were scanned into the computers and used to gradually de-age him. Of course, this couldn't have been sold to audiences without a serious shift from Pitt, and the actor pooled all of his experience to imbue the various on-screen ages with the right posture, mannerisms, energy, and sense of flexibility. Benjamin goes from old-timer to young boy before our eyes in a gradual transition that is startling, seamless, and yes, sometimes even worthy of the tears it attempts to provoke. Number 2. Ian McDermott, Star Wars Episode 1, The Phantom Menace Darth Vader may be the poster boy for the saga, but what is Star Wars without its most dastardly of villains? The Emperor, or Sheev as he's known to his friends. Providing the impetus for pretty much every bad thing that happens across the nine Skywalker saga films, Palpatine is the sinister puppet master, skulking in the shadows and controlling the action from a distance. And given his hideous and deformed face, it's probably a wise choice on his part. Despite having last played the character 16 years previously in Episode 6, Ian McDermott returned to play Sheev Palpatine in the first entry of the prequel trilogy, the now 25-year-old Phantom Menace as a relatively fresh-faced senator of the Republic. And he did it with no makeup, no digital effects, no nothing. In a moment of pure serendipity, the actor's real age aligned with the younger characters at the exact right time, making him age backwards on screen and providing one of the most seamless prequel movie character continuities we've ever seen. And number 1. Robert De Niro, The Irishman In a then-unprecedented move, Netflix gave New York auteur Martin Scorsese a blank paycheck to make his epic real-life gangster movie the Irishman, which to me is still one of his absolute best. In order to tell the story of truck driver Frank Sheeran, whose involvement with a Pennsylvanian crime family leads him to become a hitman and fixer working for the teamster Jimmy Hoffa, Scorsese insisted on using these same actors from beginning to end, rather than taking the tried and tested route of swapping out the part to fit the age. It would seem to make sense, then potentially, to choose a middle-aged cast, who could conceivably play all stages of the characters without too much trouble. A little makeup here, a little de-aging there… But no, Scorsese assembled a hefty squad of his old favorites, with Robert De Niro front and center as Frank. Employing a ridiculously expensive and previously unexplored motion capture technology, the team, led by ILM once again, enabled De Niro to play the mob assassin throughout the entirety of The Irishman. The digital de-aging process allowed De Niro and the other actors to be filmed on camera as they normally would without the sort of rigging or visual impediments this kind of technology usually calls for. The actors were coached on how to walk, move, gesture, and carry themselves like younger men, and their voices were edited in post-production. And you know what? They just about got away with it too. Either way, great movie. Love that one. 